Hey, what's up? Welcome to Vegan Cribs. Today, I'm showing you my pantry. All right, welcome to our pantry. We recently moved into this new house and we've got plenty of pantry space that we have stocked with all of our favorite vegan goodies. When I first went vegan, I didn't know what to eat to stay healthy and fit. I don't want that to be you, so let's check out what I stock in my pantry. All right, so let's jump in and talk about vegan protein sources that you can keep in your pantry. My current favorite vegan protein source right now is soy curls. Last it was tofu, now it is soy curls. And soy curls are super easy to make. They're also really inexpensive, especially when you buy them in bulk, which I do from Amazon. So all you need to do is hydrate the soy curls in a lot of water. Then you're going to take out some of the excess water. You can just lightly squeeze the soy curls. And then what I do is I love to slice up a red bell pepper. You could throw in whatever kind of veggies you want, but I really love using bell peppers. And then I kind of mix it together and I will use a sauce to kind of marinate it. I typically use this sweet teriyaki sauce. You can use whatever sauce you want, but I really love teriyaki. And before I put it into the air fryer, I will season it with this Butler chick style seasoning, which is actually specifically made for soy curls. So it makes a really delicious taste and I highly recommend it. All right, some other protein sources I really love. We've got some high protein pasta. This is bonza. It's made from chickpeas. It's really delicious. To me, it really just tastes very similar to wheat pasta, but it's got a heck of a lot more protein. And it's also gluten-free if you are gluten-free. If you're not a fan of chickpea pasta for some reason, uh, Explore Cuisine has some really great pasta options. So we've got this uh, black bean spaghetti. This is my favorite from them. It's the edamame and mung bean fettuccine, and it is delicious. So beans are a really great protein source as well. I really love refried beans. So I've got some refried pinto beans, which are my personal favorites. I also have some refried black beans, which are a close second. And then I have garbanzo beans or chickpeas. I also have some kidney beans, a whole assortment of different beans. I love throwing these in chili or if it's refried beans, I'll just kind of have that on the side with some rice and maybe some soy curls or something and kind of go in a Mexican dish direction. I've also got some dried beans here. So we've got some more garbanzo beans. I have green split peas which is something I love using for uh, split pea soup. But uh, you got some lentils as well. It's very inexpensive and super high in protein, so a really great whole food protein source. I prefer using canned beans because for me it's just easier, but if I'm going to cook them in an actual dish, then I will use lentils or these split peas or something like that. So I think one pantry staple that every vegan needs to have is some quinoa. It's high in protein and a really healthy grain. So as the name suggests, the soy curls are made of soy, but we have another, the cousin to soy curls, which is textured vegetable protein. This is also made from soy. And basically you kind of can create a ground meat kind of texture really well with textured vegetable protein. My favorite, dish that I use textured vegetable protein for is just making TVP burgers. And that's something that's really delicious and it's also very high in protein. Other than that, I don't cook with this too much. Sometimes I'll throw it in chilies or something like that and just really bumps up the protein intake. I've got some protein bars right here. These are the lemon flavor from Good Snacks and they are absolutely delicious. Honestly, most protein bars to me just taste really chalky. These do not. These are absolutely amazing. And Good Snacks recently won the taste category overall. We went through and we looked at over 100 vegan protein bars and they won the taste category. So it's very delicious. I've also got some protein powder over here. We've got uh, some Owen and some Switch. These are actually still some extra from our protein powder review. This is the 
protein powder that I actually use most regularly right now. So this is True Nutrition. This is a toasted coconut flavor, and it goes really well in the smoothies that I love making. So I use this pretty regularly. I also use this in oatmeal a lot. So the last protein source that actually does need to be cooked is Vital Wheat Gluten. So this is basically just the protein found in wheat. If you uh, do not eat gluten, this is the devil and you should not be eating it. This can be used to make seitan. Speaking of the devil, uh, this can be used to make seitan and it's a, it's a really kind of delicious meaty texture if that's something that you want to include as well. All right, now let's jump into some grains. So we already covered quinoa, which is a really great grain to have on hand. It's also high in protein, as we talked about. You can actually, for any of these grains, if you're talking about buckwheat or amaranth or quinoa or whatever, you can just go ahead and put in some mason jars, and that's a really easy way to store them, and it also looks nice on the shelf. We have not done that on this shelf. So we've got some brown rice, and we also have some I actually don't know what kind of rice this is. I think it's sushi rice, but it doesn't say it on there. It looks like sushi rice, so we're gonna go with that. I love buying rice in bulk. It's super inexpensive, so that's something that's just a real staple in my diet. And speaking of rice, you absolutely need to have a rice cooker or an instant pot or something that's gonna be able to make rice really quickly. So this is a rice cooker that I use. It's really simple. All you do is you put the rice in, put some water in, and then I just hit white rice and then start. And that's it. It's done in 20, 30 minutes, something like that. And it makes perfect rice every time, so you don't need to be doing it on the stove. All right, we're still talking about rice because I really love rice. We've got some basically instant microwave rice here. Just in case I'm going on a trip and I need to grab some extra food, I love packing some rice like this. My second favorite grain would definitely be oats. So I actually have some oatmeal packets here. I love oatmeal. And these are the maple and brown sugar. I know it's not the healthiest. You can just go ahead and use regular oats, but the maple and brown sugar, I just absolutely love maple and brown sugar. It tastes really good. So this is one vice that I have that uh, I allow myself to, to consume. So these are just old fashioned rolled oats. They work just the same. You can throw them in a uh, mix oatmeal, pretty simple. <laughs> If you want some other wheat-free pasta options, we've got some stir-fry rice noodles. So going along with the rice theme, we also have a bunch of different grains that you can choose from. I've got some couscous here, but there are so many different types of grains. Just find the one that you enjoy the most. I also have some bread. It's always nice to keep a little bread on hand. At least I like to do that so I can make a quick sandwich if I want. And that's really it for the grains. I keep things pretty simple, mostly rice and mostly oats. All right, let's jump into nuts and seeds. The one thing that I definitely always have on hand is Brazil nuts. Just one Brazil nut is gonna give you your daily dose of selenium, and that's something that every vegan needs to have. So speaking of important nutrients, I also have some flaxseed, which I would grind up. You can do that in a coffee grinder or in a high-speed blender. And I also have some chia seeds. Both of these are great sources of omega-3s. If I'm just grabbing a nut to snack on, I pretty much always go with pistachios. I love pistachios. They're also pretty high in protein. And these are sea salt, but there's actually a salt and pepper kind. I forget the brand, but they are absolutely delicious. I think it's like the main kind of pistachio brand, whatever that's called. They're really good. Two of my other favorite nuts would definitely be cashews and then also dry roasted almonds. These are salted, so that would tend to be something that I gravitate a little bit more towards. Speaking of great sources of omega-3s, we've got some walnuts here. I don't personally like walnuts that much, but if you do enjoy walnuts, that's a great way to get in some extra omega-3s. And like most people, I'm also a massive fan of peanut butter, but peanut butter is really high in calories. So what I normally have is just this PB Fit. So there are a few different kinds of powdered peanut butter. Basically what powdered peanut butter is, is it's just peanuts 
without the extra fat. So that it's just defatted. And we also have another brand here. This is PB2. I personally find there's a little bit of a difference in taste. I prefer the PB Fit, but you can choose whichever one you prefer. I really can't tell much of a difference in with the powdered peanut butter with water versus regular peanut butter. I understand there's a little bit of a taste difference, but I actually maybe even prefer it and it's lower in calories. And I love eating that with apples, which we'll get to in just a minute. One important thing to mention is that anything that's at eye level is gonna be more tempting to you on a regular basis. So generally, you wanna keep the healthier items, the things that you wanna eat more of at about eye level, and some of the higher calorie or snacky kind of foods lower in your pantry or maybe really high in your pantry, something that's not in your direct eye level all the time. So speaking of snack foods, I've got a bunch right here. And maybe, like I just said, I would normally keep them a little bit lower. We move things around for the pantry tour to keep things really clean and simple. But here I've got some healthy snack options. We've got some dry roasted edamame. I've also got some uh, lentils here as well that are roasted and salted. And we've got some more edamame beans. Just be on the lookout for added oil that's just gonna add a ton of calories and might add a little bit of flavor, but it's really not worth it if you are trying to get lean and fit. One of my all-time favorite snacks is pretzels. I absolutely love pretzels. So this is my current favorite kind of pretzel. These are actually gluten-free and I am not gluten-free, but for whatever reason, these taste better than any other pretzels that I've had in a bag. They're really great. So if you like pretzels, I'd recommend that you try them. I've also got some full wheat pretzels over here. We've got some skinny pop as well. I really love having popcorn. Skinny pop isn't necessarily skinny. It actually contains the same things normal popcorn does. We've got popcorn, oil, oil has two different kinds of oil and salt. So it's not really skinny pop. What they're doing is they're generally just kind of making smaller serving sizes. And that's why they say it's lower in calories, but it's really kind of deceitful marketing. It's okay in moderation. It's okay to have snack foods in moderation. It's okay to even have oil in moderation, but just be conscious of what you're consuming. Read nutrition labels, read the ingredient labels. Don't just look at what the marketing tells you and take that at face value. If I'm being totally honest, probably my favorite snack ever is tortilla chips. So as you can see here, we have a bag of tortilla chips that's way too big. No one should have a bag this big in their pantry. But here we are. While they're absolutely delicious, they really have no nutrition. They're packed with calories and I enjoy eating them, but I also limit myself. And something that's really important to keep in mind is what I call the law of grocery carts, which is this. Whatever goes in your grocery cart when you're at the grocery store is going to end up in your pantry or in your fridge or wherever you keep your food. Anything that you see at the grocery store and think, oh, I'm craving this, so I'm gonna throw in my grocery cart. Well, then you're gonna see it every single time you open up your pantry and you're gonna be tempted to eat that. So instead of forcing yourself to constantly create willpower, it's easier to just keep these at the grocery store and never put them in your cart in the first place. But we got them and we'll eat them in moderation slowly over time. All right, now for a much healthier snack, I've got apples and I absolutely love apples. So these are Cosmic Crisp, which is my personal favorite apple right now. When I'm craving something a little sweet, I'll often just chop up an apple and I'll actually use some PB Fit and then I'll just eat that with apples and it's a really great snack. It's also lower in calories and it actually has a decent amount of protein from the PB Fit. Now let's talk about some health focused foods and supplements. So up first, I wanna talk about turmeric roots and ginger roots. These are both foods that I've been consuming on a daily basis for the past several months, and they both have powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. So this is what turmeric root looks like if you've never had it outside of just a regular 
powdered spice container and I just chop off a little piece, I skin it and then I throw it into the blender when I'm making a smoothie and same thing with the ginger root. Another food that I kind of treat like a supplement is seaweed. So I've got some dried seaweed. This is specifically kombu seaweed. And this is a fantastic source of iodine. So you really don't need that much. I'll just take a little piece. I'll just break it off like this. I really just throw it in my mouth and chew it. And I enjoy the taste. It's kind of a little salty. It does have a fishy kind of taste, but um, it's something that uh, I'm totally fine with having in, uh, in small doses. Another great form of seaweed that is also high in iodine is dulse. So I've got some whole leaf dulse here and I also have some dulse granules. This is easy to just like sprinkle over your food. You can sprinkle this over salads or something like that. It's a very fine texture and it's absolutely packed with iodine. Another easy way to get iodine into your diet is to just have iodized salt, but I prefer pink Himalayan salt, so I'm not getting any iodine in there. That's why I like to supplement with seaweed on a daily basis. I've got a multivitamin here. Now, generally, this is something that I would use when I'm traveling or use when I feel like I'm not getting enough veggies in my diet. So this is really kind of just a fail safe to make sure that I'm checking all the boxes when it comes to my nutrition. I don't normally consume this, so this is kind of maybe a few times a month. Vitamin B12 is something that all vegans should consider taking on a regular basis. Here I've got a vegan omega-3 supplement, and this contains preformed EPA and DHA, which your body would otherwise need to convert from the fatty acid ALA. And I actually recently had a really interesting conversation with Dr. Neil Barnard, and he said that you do not need to supplement with omega-3. I've heard from other vegan doctors, such as Dr. Michael Greger, that you should supplement with preformed EPA and DHA. So it seems like there's a little bit more science that we really need to get into when it comes to the research. But for now, I've been kind of largely supplementing with omega-3. That's something I do on almost a daily basis. And another supplement I would like to give an honorable mention is vegan D3. So vitamin D3, this is something that you should consider supplementing if you're not spending time outdoors in the sun. That's where we naturally get vitamin D from. But if you're not getting out in the winter months and getting sunlight on your skin, then you should consider supplementing with vitamin D. It's time to jump into some condiments and sauces that I always have on hand. We'll talk about seasonings as well. So we've got some nutritional yeast. This is something that any good vegan should have in their pantry. It has a really nice cheesy flavor. It also has quite a bit of protein. It tends to be uh, fortified with B12 and some other nutrients as well. So it kind of serves as a pseudo vitamin of sorts. We've also got some light agave nectar. You can have some maple syrup on hand. Those are kind of the two main sweeteners that I'll use. So as far as seasonings, I like to keep things really simple. Basically salt, pepper, and a heck of a lot of garlic powder. But I also really love using blends. So I've got some garlic and herb. This one's delicious. It's also salt free, which is really good. I've got some everything bagel seasoning here, which is really delicious. And I also have some um, pink salt, black pepper, and garlic, which are my three favorite seasonings all put together. I also love using Cajun seasonings and other things like that, so lots of different options. Let's talk about different sauces. So generally, I like to keep things lower calorie. I'm always on the lookout for oil when I'm looking at the ingredients labels. So some really good low or no oil options would be liquid aminos. This has kind of like a soy sauce flavor, but it's a little healthier. And then mustard is a huge favorite of mine. I love putting mustard on things. I generally, I'll have it with pretzels or I'll put it on a TVP burger or something like that. I'm also a huge fan of salsa, which goes along with my tortilla chip addiction. So that's great to have on hand. We've got some fajita sauce here. I like keeping sauces, seasonings, and flavorings really simple. So I generally get them pre-made. 
Here we've got some sweet teriyaki sauce. I also have some stir fry sauce. And you can basically buy these different kinds of sauces in any grocery store. Just again, be sure that you're looking at the ingredients labels. This is lower in calories because it only contains a very little bit of oil, but some things like salad dressings or other sauces are loaded with oil and therefore loaded with calories. Oil is really something that I eliminate from my diet. You do not need oil. It does not have any special health properties. It's really just hyper concentrated calories. Generally, this is something that I will use in dishes maybe once every two months. It's something I use very rarely because you just don't need it. So now I wanna run through some last miscellaneous items that I always keep stocked in my pantry. Up first, we have some plant milk. I have some soy milk that I always keep in the fridge, but this is always good to have as a backup just in case you run out. I've also got some Plant Strong chili here. This is absolutely delicious. The whole Plant Strong line is really great and I highly recommend it. Shout out to Rip for some awesome products. If you want a lower calorie version of microwavable rice, you can check out this riced cauliflower. It's a really great way to add volume to your dishes without adding a ton of calories. If you wanna thicken sauces or make extra crispy tofu, you can grab some cornstarch and keep that in your pantry. One food that I absolutely love is sushi. I love making my own avocado sushi rolls. You can also include some cucumber and some uh, shredded carrots, and that makes a really great meal. So I've got some sushi ginger, which is honestly one of my favorite things Ever. I really, I could eat sushi ginger just right out of the can, which I know is very much a love it or hate it kind of item, but I am firmly in the love it category for sushi ginger. All right, so to prove just how much I love sushi, we've got an entire card deck of nori right here. So this is just the seaweed kind of paper sheets that you roll sushi up with. And it's something that I will always have in my pantry. Honestly, I'm not a huge raw tomato fan, but I do love having tomato sauces, pasta sauces, and I also have diced tomatoes. This is really great to just throw in soups or chilies or other dishes like that. So when you add water to cook or saute anything, a really great substitute to add some additional flavor is this vegetable broth. You can also use this better than bouillon. This is basically the same kind of thing, but generally it's gonna be a little bit cheaper per unit flavor or whatever you wanna call all that than it would be to purchase veggie broth. All right, so we already talked about grains, but one of my favorite high carb foods is actually potatoes. So I've got some sweet potatoes here. I also have what I believe are batatas, which I think it may also be called a Japanese sweet potato, although I'm getting far outside of my domain of expertise. So let me know in the comments what these are actually called. But these are totally delicious and it has a really unique flavor that I really enjoy because it tastes good. We're growing some new potatoes in our pantry. So should probably add these to the menu in the near future. <laughs> And last but not least, we have two of my main staples that I use for cooking, especially when I'm sauteing something in a pan. I'm constantly using garlic. I actually generally prefer to use minced garlic because frankly, it's a lot easier. So I keep that in the fridge, but I also have onions here. I generally will chop these up and saute them in pretty much every single dish besides oatmeal or <laughs> obviously smoothies and stuff like that. I have a lot of onions because I'm constantly using them. All right, so that's gonna be a wrap for our pantry tour. I hope that you got some value from this video. I'm gonna grab a snack because I'm a little hungry and I'll catch you in the next video.